Hey, I'm Amelia Mosley, and today we're celebrating famous scientists. Here's what's coming up. We find out how Charles Darwin changed science forever, and how Albert Einstein came up with the theory of relativity. First up, we're going to check out some famous Aussie scientists and how they changed the way we live today. Check it out. This Aussie scientist saved millions of lives by helping make a drug called penicillin. His name was Howard Florey. Penicillin fights bacterial infections that, left untreated, could be deadly. But its discovery all happened by accident. A guy named Alexander Fleming left some dirty petri dishes lying around when he went on holiday. When he got back, mould had formed, but around it there was no bacteria. Fleming wrote a paper about this special mould, but that's pretty much where he left it. About a decade later in 1939, an Australian man, Howard Florey, decided this mould was worth a closer look. Howard and his team found ways to extract the powerful parts that fought bacteria. And within a few years, the world's first antibiotic was born, penicillin. It would go on to play a really big role during the Second World War because of its ability to fight infected wounds, saving the lives of millions of soldiers. Penicillin has been treating bacterial infections ever since and has led to more antibiotics being discovered. In 1945, Howard Florey, along with his colleague Ernst Chain and original discoverer Alexander Fleming, were awarded a Nobel Prize. An amazing accomplishment, but Florey also appeared on our $50 note for a while. That's pretty good too. It's something we all use pretty much every day. But did you know an Aussie invented Wi-Fi? John O'Sullivan is a physicist and engineer and was inspired by Stephen Hawking's theory of evaporating black holes, so he set out to find them. He never managed it, but he did invent a tool that reduced the interference of radio signals. Fast forward to 1992 and John was working for the CSIRO and was given the job of inventing a faster way for computers to communicate without the use of wires. Remembering his previous work, he tweaked it and created the basics of Wi-Fi that are still used today. His invention and the CSIRO around $1 billion in royalties after he patented it in Australia and the US. Every time I uh, you know, pull my mobile out and think, yeah, yeah, I that's got the same, the same technology. My laptop has the same technology. You can't help but feel pride. Us too, John. Us too. This Aussie was an absolute pioneer. In the 1930s, Ruby Payne Scott was one of a handful of female physicists in the country. And she'd go on to play a really important role in the development of radar at what's now the CSIRO. Ruby Payne Scott helped develop radar equipment using bent coat hangers and sticky tape, which helped protect Australia's coastline during World War II. She also worked in solar radio astronomy, helping measure radio emissions from the sun and stars. But she was a trailblazer in other ways too. As a woman, she was discriminated against. She had to fight for a decent wage, and she got in trouble for wearing shorts rather than dresses to work, even though her job involved climbing ladders and getting onto rooftops. She was even forced to resign when she became pregnant. Ruby never went back to working as a physicist and spent the rest of her life as a teacher. But today she's remembered with a special CSIRO award and this nifty profile. Which of the following can't be treated with antibiotics? A cold, tonsillitis, or an infected cut? It's a cold. That's because it's caused by a virus, not bacteria. Next up, we're going to find out about Charles Darwin. He's one of history's most famous and influential scientists. Let's find out why. Thank you so much for joining me today, Mr. Darwin, for your only interview of 2020. Yes, hello. <laughs> now, I hear today is your 211th birthday. Happy birthday, and might I just say, you don't look a day over 200. 
Oh, thank you. Although I have been dead for the past 138 years, so... Now tell me about the beagle. Ah, yes. A scent hound bred primarily for hunting hair. Yeah, no, I, I meant the ship. Ah. ah, yes. A ship that was charting the waters of the South Americas. And I joined the crew in 1831 as a naturalist. Naturally. I spent five years travelling the world, searching for new specimens to study. During my trip around the Galapagos and Cocos Islands, I spent a lot of time studying finches. Actually, they were probably passery forms of the Thropidae family, but everyone calls them Darwin's finches. Anyway, I noticed something very interesting. These birds all had distinctly different beaks. Some with strong beaks that ate mostly nuts. Others with narrow beaks that ate mostly insects. It's as if nature had selected the exact right beak for the bird's preferred food source. Ah yes, your famous theory of natural selection. Tell me, what's that all about? Let's take this cage of finches, for example. Uh, where did you get that cage of finches? Each of these finches is unique. They have slight natural variations, and some of those differences make finches better at surviving. Now take Ethel here. Hello, Ethel. Imagine Ethel had a slightly stronger beak. That might make her better at cracking hard seeds or nuts. So she'd get more food, which means she's more likely to survive and have babies, and she might pass on her strong beak to some of them. Or say Charlie here has a slightly narrower beak, which would make him just a little bit better at catching insects in little holes. So he might be more likely to survive and have narrow-beaked babies. Over enough time, you might see two different types of finches appear. Some with narrow beaks, some with strong beaks. So what you're saying is that natural selection is the process by which organisms that are best suited to survive their environment are more likely to reproduce. And through that process, different species have evolved from a common ancestor. Precisely. And that's why we're all monkeys. No, 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 I, I never said that. I merely pointed out the obvious similarities between humans and apes. It follows that they evolved from a common ancestor. Now, you've written several books, including your bestseller on the origin of species, which is still regarded as one of the most important works of science. Was it an instant hit? Well, there were uh, mixed reactions. Ah! <gasps> oh. You have to understand that people in my part of the world were fairly religious and didn't take too well to the idea of things evolving. In fact, it took me quite a while to get my head around it at first. But the science world went ape for it. And why wouldn't they? My theories explained everything. Why birds have wings, why turtles have shells, why a beaver looks like this, why a duck looks like that, and why a platypus looks like, well, everything. And do you know what? Ever since then, scientists have only added to my theories. Now it forms the very backbone of biology. Well, thank you, Mr. Darwin. It has certainly been enlightening. Well, thank you for having me. And would you like a finch? I've got plenty of them. Did you know that Charles Darwin invented the office chair? It turns out he wanted to work a lot quicker, so he put some wheels on the bottom of his chair and zoomed around his office. Just over a hundred years ago, Albert Einstein announced his general theory of relativity to the world. It's pretty complicated, but it had a huge impact on our understanding of how the universe works. Here's how he came up with it. He's the guy who didn't like to wear socks, dropped out of school and helped inspire the look of Yoda. It's Albert Einstein, and he's mostly known for being a brilliant scientist with some incredible ideas. The world heard about one of those ideas on the 25th of November 1915, when Einstein announced the final equations for his general theory of relativity. It was a huge moment. 
but even today, his work on relativity is still helping to give scientists a better understanding of our universe. Albert Einstein was born in Germany in 1879, and he was a pretty normal kid. He liked playing violin, did okay in school, and was pretty good at maths. But at 15, he dropped out and tried to get into uni, but failed his entrance exams. Yep, even a person often called the smartest of all time can fail a test. He then started a new life in Switzerland. He got into uni there and studied to be a teacher. But after he graduated, he couldn't find a teaching job. So he got work in a patent office, checking out other people's inventions. And it's about this time that Albert got busy, putting together some pretty impressive scientific ideas of his own. In 1905, he published several important papers, including one with this famous formula, which you've probably seen before. But what Albert Einstein considered his most important work came in 1915, when he published his general theory of relativity. It's all about the relationship between space and time, and it gave us our best understanding yet of how gravity works. More than 100 years later, that theory is still really important. It's helped scientists explain the existence of black holes. How time travel might be possible. And even how the universe was formed. It's still inspiring new research into physics and astronomy too like the experiments going on here at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Not long after Einstein's general theory of relativity was released, he became famous around the world. And in 1921, he won the Nobel Prize for Physics. Albert Einstein has a really important place in history books. And as we celebrate 100 years of general relativity, scientists say there's still a lot more to learn and discover from Albert Einstein's unique way of thinking. And no, we're not just talking about his attitude towards socks. And that's all for this BTN Famous Scientist Special. For more info on all of our specials, including heaps of teacher resources, just head to our website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to see more content just like this, then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out ABC Education's website for more great content for students, teachers and parents. Thanks for watching.